Well, welcome back to another episode of the Buffalo Happy Hour. Mike, what's going on? Derek, we were bullshitting and jib-jabbering, <laughs> yawk yaggering. So, what's up, dude? You got a haircut. Sure did. Talk about it. Feels so good. Did- it was my first one since quarantine and COVID all started. So, we're, we're kind of getting back into the swing of things. Going back and catching up with the barber is the best feeling in the entire world. It's like, man, how have you been? I haven't talked to you in the longest time I've ever not talked to you. I'm just staring at your hair, but keep talking. Thank you. You like it? It looks good. Clean. Especially because I looked homeless uh, a while ago. And it's funny because everybody with the interview coming out Friday will see how homeless I actually looked. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be crazy. Uh, but yeah, man, we're, we're hanging in there. We're having a good time. The It's weird getting your hair cut with a mask on. I will say that. Did you, a little bit challenging. Did you take it off at points? Yeah. Just had to get around my ears, you know? Yeah. You have to. You have to. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Luckily, I have those surgical masks that I got from you, or else the other ones that go behind my head. I mean, I don't know what people want you to do. So, And it's weird because we live in this time now where it's like I have to ask consent to take my mask off. Like, can I do this? Are you okay with this? Is it okay if I continue? It's this weird time that we live in now where I don't, I don't know like what they want me to do. So it's... Hey, man, is this cool? Can I do this? And they're like, yeah, sure. I mean, I don't care. I'm like, well, I I have to ask. So that's where we are. I'm trying to figure out when we don't have to wear them anymore. Right? Yeah, like at, at what point? Because is stage four, I know that we said that we weren't going to talk about this, but is stage four just floodgates are open and everyone can do whatever they want? No, it's a lot more is open, but it's still at a limited capacity. So it's much better, obviously, than phase two, but it's not like it was before corona where they're like, all right, this is what we're going to do. You just allow 80,000 people back into the stadium. You can have 450 people at weddings. You can have, you know, everybody sit nut to butt inside the barbershop, breathe <laughs> on each other. I mean, they're probably going to do st- still somewhat of a staged reopening even through stage four, but I don't I don't understand, like, at the end of stage four, are they like, all right, take off the mask? Or are they never going to tell us to take off the mask and it's going to be user discretion? Would it, I just, would- would that be considered stage five then? Why do they stop at stage four if there's still restrictions going on? You would think the last phase is everything's done. We also know that most things in politics make absolutely zero sense. Truth, truth. So, you know, you can have a wedding venue open, but the mall can't be open. But the Bills can practice, but you can't go to J. Crew. I, it just doesn't make any sense. So I stopped asking questions. I'm just waiting for all of it to go away. Right. But it was very, very, like therapeutic to get my hair cut again did you fall asleep when he got to the back of your neck i did not but i was close to it's just so comfortable to sit in there and just let him do what he does best and i'm just like this is this is what i live for i never knew how much i loved haircuts until you can go three months without getting one that's why i go every two and a half weeks to get a haircut two and a half weeks holy shit pretty much yeah as soon as it touches my ears i'm like that's it can't do it i'm already homeless (laughs) i was getting to look like a little ron swanson there because this was so puffed out that I actually had to comb it back around my ears. And I started getting that, like, back back flow, you know? Did you get the double tuck? Yep. Double oh, yeah. tuck around the oh, ears? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> so gross. <laughs> but the thing is that women don't understand is men's haircuts, when they get cut, I mean, I don't really know if women don't understand because I'm not a woman, but the when you get your haircut, you have hair everywhere for, like, the next 24 hours. Yeah. It, you have to shower, and even then, it's not a guarantee. Like I'll go, like have an itch in my ear, and I'll come up with uh, seventy five thousand hair particles there. Yeah, uh, how does it's such a struggle? What a struggle we have. It takes a long time. It does. But to be fair, I'd rather take that for a twenty dollar haircut than spend one hundred and five dollars and cut my hair twice a year, and it be this long experience where it's just never ending. I mean, you're not wrong. But then you look flawless. Ooh. All right, first beep, Crown Royal, uh, normal. Non flavored crown because they have like a gajillion different options to choose from today. <laughs> yep, I'm getting hammered tonight. Just kidding. What's wrong, Derek? I'm not a fan of crown. What's wrong, Derek? <laughs> it's just crown royal. We'll talk about it. Dude, it has no taste to it. It's. Uh, we will. I am going to try extremely hard to remain professional and not make a ton of we whoop the British asses in 1700s <laughs> jokes. So I, uh, yeah, what I will say is let's leave whiskey making to Americans, the Irish, the Scottish, 
The Japanese? No. No, they can, <laughs> they no, can but, go away, too. But Canada is known for their rye. Yeah. Rye but, whiskey in Canada is amazing. Yeah. It's okay. just this. I, I don't know what the mash bill is for this. Do you know what it is? Yeah, we'll talk about okay, it. Okay, we'll talk about it. All right, so first things first, too. Let's talk about the shirts. Yeah. So this comes out after the interview releases. Yep. Or before. After. After. Nailed it. So... If you haven't watched our interview with Crooked Lampost Brewery in Eden, New York, head on over to our YouTube channel and watch it, because it's amazing. Uh, similar to today, when we were interviewing them, we got blasted by a random rainstorm. And thunder like crazy. Tons of thunder. Uh, a little bit of lightning, but you guys obviously couldn't necessarily see that too much, because we were focused with our cameras on the interview. Uh, but, good interview, a lot of good content, a lot of good information, how they found their name, the products they make. Uh, I mean, Mike's wife makes a really good charcuterie board. <laughs> so that's awesome. They were they were an amazing interview and just super awesome guys. Awesome hosts. You On the way home, the whole time you and I were saying, we just got to go back to hang out with them just yeah. to grab a beer and chill in their garage. Because yeah. So they're a homebrew club, which what that means is they're not legally allowed to sell. They basically just make it for their house. So with with that being said, they have uh, friends come over and everything that can come into their tap and get some beer from their tap, but they don't have a canning system. They don't have a distribution. They literally just make it for their house for like their friends and neighbors. That's it. So they, they found us on Instagram and we decided that we should reach out to them because they, they're one of our fans from the beginning and we heard good things, especially with untapped, which you talk about in the interview. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we thought, why not just go there and interview them and just hang out? Uh, it, it was such an amazing interview, such good content. And the wings after were hot. Too hot. <laughs> <laughs> they surprised us with food. Uh, again, totally didn't expect that. No, but they did they not made, need to do that. That was so nice. They made really good wings on the grill, but... The sauce was uh, not for the Irish, and n- clearly not for the Italians either. <laughs> Extremely hot. I had beads of sweat coming down the face. It was, it, was, it was warm. It was a lot. A lot going on. But yeah. So, Crooked Lamp Post Brewery. Definitely check them out. Uh, follow them on Instagram at Crooked Brews, and definitely check out the interview as well. Mm-hmm. And if I can say definitely one more time, I will. That's fine. So, you know what you definitely should not do? Hold in a sneeze. So... Go off. Go ahead. Take it. Oh, God. <laughs> Some of you may know my voice is actually back to normal. It is. During the interview was not. It was a little raspy. I kind of sound like who's Louis Armstrong a little bit. Jesus. <laughs> but so there are ramifications of COVID, one of them being self-conscious about your sneezes. So anybody who knows me personally, I have an excruciatingly loud sneeze. It comes from the diaphragm and travels all the way up and just bursts out. If you're my neighbor, you know when I sneeze. That's that's what I'm getting at here. Everybody knows when I sneeze. And I'm not the most gracious sneezer either. Like, I try to go for the arm, but sometimes it just comes out, man. It, it just it comes from everything within me. My heart stops for a half second, and it just all... It, it's, it's, quite, it's quite the show. <laughs> so, the other day I'm taking Cleo for a walk. And also, mind you, if you do know me, I have extremely bad allergies as well during this time in springtime <laughs> mike's just dying over here during the springtime and since buffalo didn't have a spring this year they just jumped right to summer i guess uh i'm getting my allergies now so i'm sneezing like crazy but sneezes means rona is being transmitted i guess even though if i don't have any symptoms so i sneeze all the time 15 times in the morning is a minimum 15 times at night is a, a pretty good guess too so i'm walking cleo at night we're going around my block and we, as we're walking down the street, there are three people on the one side of the road and I'm walking down the middle of the road because I don't have sidewalks here and I have to sneeze. And I'm like, Derek, don't sneeze, man. I don't need my neighbors calling the cops or something because I'm terrorizing the neighborhood with Rona. So I'm like, just hold it in, hold it in. You're fine. Just hold it in. Just hold it in. And I couldn't anymore. I could feel it. I could feel my diaphragm quivering and everything was just being forced up. So I'm like, I used to hold in my sneeze when I was younger. I think I can do it again. So it came up. I was getting ready to sneeze, held it all in. Boom. I heard a pop right in my throat. I'm like, this is not good. And then obviously, sneezes come in 47s for me. So I just kept going, which kept aggravating everything. Yeah, it was bad. So all Wednesday night, I could not swallow. 
literally could not swallow. It hurt so bad. And every time I did, I heard a click in my throat. Like every time I swallowed, it was, it was so painful. I was going to go to the hospital, but I could still breathe. So I'm like, you know what? I'm a fighter. I'm going to go. I'm going to go to sleep. If I wake up tomorrow, great. If not, th- this was my time. So I go to sleep. I'm like, Gina, since you wake up in the middle of the night anyway, just check my pulse. Make sure I'm still with us here. Uh, she's like, are you kidding me? I'm like, nah, I'm just kidding. I'll be fine. So anyway, go to sleep. And ever since then, it's gotten progressively better. But I'm pretty sure I like, either subtly damaged my vocal cords. And it's just getting it back up to what it used to be. Or I like bursted some sort of blood vessel in my throat. Because it was so hard for me to talk and for me to cough or sneeze or anything since then. And obviously, every time I feel good, I have to sneeze again because allergy season. So it's just been this perpetual, I'm going to kill myself and stab a knife in my throat type deal. So how was your weekend, Mike? Well, then. (laughs) Rule of thumb, who cares what anybody thinks? You know if you're sick or not, and you know if you have Rona or not. Me, I try to be polite. You know what? I'm not going to be polite anymore. I shouldn't have held in that sneeze. And every single time that it hurts to swallow, I think to myself, why in the world would I do that? That was so dumb of me to hold in a sneeze. My, I'm pretty sure average sneezes are like 200 miles an hour. Mine's at least 700 miles an hour just because of who I am as a person. I just can't control it. So all of that being held in my throat area, it just messed things up. So if I squeak through this episode, mind your business. <laughs> So I've <laughs> never dealt with that in my life, uh, partly because I always just sneezed and sneezed loudly and told everyone to pound salt if they made a face or gave me some type of tood. It's just not worth it. I agree with you. Just let it out. I'm glad that you had to fight through that experience to come to that conclusion. Yeah. So I, I've always heard growing up that your eyes are going to pop out. Yeah, you could no. blow, blow your brains out. Yeah. No, it's the throat. That was the biggest thing for me. It was so painful. Like I could, I could move my Adam's apple. Like I can move it anyway. But obviously, once things start happening, I go into this neurotic, late quarter life crisis mode where I'm like, "Oh my god, let me Google to make sure I'm dying." You know, because that's the first thing you do is you go to the Oogles and make sure that you can still live 24 hours. So I go to Google. First thing that comes up: man in England, 27 years old, blows his throat up and is in hospital for two weeks because he held in a sneeze. I'm like, perfect. That's what I got. I'm dying. That's it. Dying. So just rule of thumb to everybody. Who cares what anybody thinks? Let that sneeze go because you can seriously injure yourself. Wow. Public service announcement. There it is. That's what I'm saying. It was scary. Jesus. It was a very scary experience. Yeah, that's... Uh, well, I'm glad you're okay. Thanks, man. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And... Is it weird that the first thought that went through my mind was, I speak for a living. I mean, this is... I run a podcast. How can my voice be messed up? No, that's dedication. <laughs> it was also my first thought, but then I realized, wait, we don't get paid, and <laughs> we have like five listeners, four subscribers, <laughs> most of which are uh, Journey yep. and Colleen unsubscribing and resubscribing, <laughs> and to us trick. doing the same thing just to trick the algorithms. <laughs> so it's a good time. We're doing good. Yeah. But yeah, it was it was a really scary time, and I'm, I'm glad that I lived to see the other side of that. Me too, man. Because now we can golf together. Yes. So you went but, golfing. Uh, I did go golfing on Father's Day weekend with my father and brother-in-law. Went to Syracuse because that's where my father-in-law lives currently resides. So golfed nine holes real quick. It was good. Uh, I used your tip and made sure that my right hand was over the club um and then proud of you son yes and i actually focused on keeping my head down and world of a difference world of a difference club face actually hit the ball correctly i didn't tow anything uh seven iron was actually crushing again and i drove the green with a three wood so nice yeah good for you yeah man it was a good time i'm happy for you it was a hundred and 170 yards of the hole, and I drove it. Nice. So, lost that ball, which sucks, but what are you going to do? So, no, it was <laughs> Oh, good. so you actually drove over the green. Yeah, I, I drove the green. I thought that you were saying you drove 
the green, like on a part four, and you hit the green. That's what I thought you meant. No, I'm it like, was God a, damn. Yeah, it was. It was a par three, and you it was, overshot it. It was a par three, 170 yards from the tee box. And you and probably I, hit it like two. Yeah, I crushed it. And I'm like, good for you. Damn it. I was happy, but I damn wasn't because I, I saw it bounce, and I'm like, dude, I got a great bounce. It's probably just on the other side of the green because it was on a little lip. Mm-hmm. It was. She gone. <laughs> she gone. <laughs> she gone. So, you check the hole. Was it in the hole? <laughs> definitely was not in the hole. <laughs> My dad had that, actually, at Bobolinks. He hit one of the worst shots of his entire life, and it just went rolling down the fairway. <laughs> and when he was walking up to it, he's like, right, I can't see it. And he went up to the thing, and it was in the hole. He got a hole-in-one by basically putting it off of the tee box. He was like, am I excited that I got a hole-in-one, or am I disappointed because that was easily the worst shot of my entire life? <laughs> I would have ran with one. that. Yeah, no, he, he got yeah. I don't have a hole in one. He has something on me. I don't even have a hole in one outside of golf. So, anyways, <laughs> the the whiskey we're drinking today. God. Yeah, tell them about it, Mike. Is Crown Royal. Uh, it's forty ABV, eighty proof. The mash bill is sixty four percent corn, thirty two percent rye, and four percent malted barley. So, put your history caps on, everyone, because we're going to school. Here we go. So, Crown Royal was first created in 1939 as a gift for the King and Queen of England. King George VI and Queen Elizabeth made history when they became the first reigning monarchs to visit Canada. They arrived by boat and traveled the vast country by train. Once the news hit, a Canadian spirit entrepreneur set out to craft a whiskey suited for the King and Queen. His name is Samuel Bromfman. So he tried over 600 different blends before outfitting the final product in a decanter. And the regal purple bag made with gold stitching became the final touch. The whiskey was then presented to the king and queen. And the final product was a blend of 50 different whiskeys and officially became known as Crown Royal. Once they enjoyed it, they as in the king and queen, the train was stocked with 10 cases. Word quickly spread, and then in the 1960s, Crown was released in the U.S. markets. Since then, it has become the top-selling Canadian whiskey. Crown is made on the edge of Lake Winnipeg in Jimley, Manitoba. One and a half million barrels of Crown are waiting to be shared around the world there. Gimli hugs the western shoreline of one of the largest freshwater lakes with an active harbor. Fun fact, it's also home to the largest Icelandic population outside of Iceland. The property stretches 360 scenic acres with 50 barrel houses. The distillery employs about 76 people, I should say a boot, (laughs) allowing Crown to be produced 24-7. With the amount of distillery, or I'm sorry, yes, so, goodness, with the amount the distillery is producing, the waste is also high. They do a ton in this department, though. Crown has reduced emissions by more than 99% over the last decade. In 2016, Crown reduced water utilization by 35%, saving 50 million gallons. They are also committed to a target of zero waste to landfill by 2020, with a reduction of 49% in 2016. So, some awards, um, outside of everyone knowing what Crown Royal is... Crown's Cornerstone Blend was Whiskey Advocate's 2016 Canadian Whiskey of the Year. At the 2017 Canadian Whiskey Awards, they also won the Northern Harvest Rye Sipping Whiskey of the Year. Uh, Crown, uh, yep, so Crown's Handed Selected Barrel won the Sipping Whiskey of the Year, and Crown Vanilla won the Flavored Whiskey of the Year. The Cornerstone Blend also won a gold. So, they've been around for a while. Designed for the King and Queen. Won some high-end awards, and it is sold everywhere. So, we chose a non-flavored crown, and now we get to enjoy it because of a beep. Throw it back, Derek. What timing with the end of that segment? Oh, yeah. It's like you planned it. Oh, yeah. I feel like you're going to give this a 76. (laughs) Not... Because of a pun, because of 1776. But anyways, yeah, go on. Won. Um, no, I mean, the thing is with this <clears throat> is Canada took something that they're very, very good at making. Or maybe they took this and they realized, you know what, it's great, but let's stick to rye. Because their heart should be in rye. Even with this, their mash bill is a very, very high rye for being a whiskey. What is it? It's 30, 32. 32, which is ridiculously high. 
I mean, if you think of a uh, cask and crew, mm-hmm. that's that's something to to pair it with because cask and crew actually takes whiskey from Canada, takes rye whiskey from Canada. So, cask and crew is what fifty one percent rye and forty nine percent corn. So this is only nineteen percent of rye away from being a cask and crew predominantly rye. So I think that with this different mash bill and it being such a high rye and such a low corn, but still calling it whiskey just tricks your palate into making you think it's going to be sweet and it's not. This is not a sweet beverage. It's very harsh for being a bourbon, in my opinion. For being an 80 proof, it shouldn't be this harsh. But we'll get to that a little bit later. I agree. That's just my initial thoughts because I... To be to be frank, I'm not a crown person. I, I'm really not. Um, I'm not a Jack person either. I if I'm going whiskey, I need something like Elijah Craig or Bullet or something Kentucky. I'm not a huge um, Tennessee whiskey guy or a Canadian whiskey. I want Canadian rye. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll see as we get to the rating to see how we actually think of it because the label and branding is going to bring this one way up, probably from what I. If label and branding wasn't a factor in her rating scale, it would be down. But since label and branding is, it's going up. We'll Little teaser. About, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. There's lots to discuss on their label and branding. Yes. But, yeah. it. Uh, do you remember the first time you saw a Crown Bottle? Yes. It was at my mom's house because my stepdad drank it all the time. Were you impressed? Yes. I was driven to the purple bag. Yep. I love, like, th- that is something that is going to bring this label and branding up high because there's no other whiskey I, that I know of that comes with a bat, like a, like a satchel. <laughs> you know, it's so interesting. Is there a history behind that? Do you know why they started doing that? Did you say that in your thing? I was trying to look up what they blend it, like, what percentage they blend it with. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know if we can find that. Yeah. I, that might be. Behind closed doors. Oh. But maybe, maybe we'll have to take a trip to Canada to figure it out. Figure it out. Figure, <laughs> the, <laughs> figure out what all the hype is about. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. I didn't want inter- to I didn't want to interrupt you. I'm sorry. We're so close to Canada, it's okay for us to do this. Just yeah, so. we're half Canadian. And that was actually proven to me on deployment because there were Canadian forces there and they asked where I was from and I said Buffalo, New York, and they're like, Oh, he's honorary Canadian. Bring him into Canada House. Right. So I'm like, What is going on? And then they literally had like Tim Hortons and Donuts and <laughs> I'm like, We're in Eastern Europe. How do you have this? Yeah. But Canadians do Canadian things, man. Oh yeah. So oh yeah. Oh sure. Oh <laughs> sure. Oh sure. <laughs> so the the first time I saw a crown bottle, I thought that the person that brought that to the party was the most wealthy individual I've ever seen in my life. And I'm like, I why is that here? Like, what's up with the purple bag? Why is this the softest thing in the world? And then, <laughs> like, your parents would use it as, like, a change bag. Mm-hmm. I'm like, this is wild, man. Like, this, what is this? And I'm staring at it. And I was afraid to hold the bottle because if I dropped it, I knew that I couldn't afford anything close to that. And I just, I didn't know, you know. But... You know, this is an exceptional bottle. It is. All right. Anyway, we'll, we'll get to it a little bit later. Yeah, we still got cocktail section, and it has a twist. Yeah, it's a twist. It's not a cork. It's just its own. It's a decanter, man. It's its own thing. You know, it's its own thing. I like it. Yeah, crown is crown. Crown is crown. It's and in a class by itself. Oh, anyway, here is the pitcher. <laughs> Perfect. Nailed it. I'm trying to figure out the nose on this, too. Because there's just almost nothing coming in like others that we've had. Have you had other crown? Like the vanilla, maple? Which one would be your favorite? Apple. Really? Yeah. Are you... Here's how you have to drink crown apple, though. You put it in the freezer. That's a really good way to enjoy crown apple. Then you just drink... You shot. It's a boilermaker. Shots beer. Shot beer, and you just chill and you just crush crown apple. Or you can do crown apple and ginger. Oof. Yeah. Crown apple ginger ale. I've gotten messed up. On. I've crushed some weekends on that. <laughs> no doubt. I feel like crown is your typical like mixer. Mixer, but also like uh, baby boomer generation drink. Yeah. 
This is something that... Those damn boomers. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is something you're not going to find in a lot of people's bars when we're older, when we're our parents' age, no. I feel. No. This is going to get phased out really quickly because this was pivotal when it first came out. Like when it first came to the United States, everybody loved it. Yeah, 1964. Yeah. But now everything is... There's so many new distilleries coming up and the availability of different bourbons has increased. So I think this is going to get phased out soon. Yeah, a lot of people would rather put money into a local distillery mm-hmm. than a commercialized product, unless it's a flavor. Yeah, and, and that's kind of where I was going with that. So my favorite, and this kind of brings us back to why I don't like this, is because I would, if I had a drink crown, I would drink crown maple because the maple has those brown sugars and those uh, oaky taste to it that you would get in a traditional bourbon. So if I was to get a crown, I would get that because it would most likely or most closely mirror something that I actually enjoy. Sure. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. And plus, you can't go wrong with maple syrup. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. We are going to get uh, sued. <laughs> we're actually a licensed comedian, so we can't get sued. Yeah, no. Uh, anyways. So what happened this week? Uh, how was your weekend week? Anything new or exciting? My grandmother used to always say that to me. She would always, whenever she would see me, she'd go, Hi, Derek, anything new or exciting? I'm like, no, Graham, you saw me yesterday. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> Good question. Is it anything new or exciting? Yes. I got a package of car detail liquids. Ooh. And I'm very excited. <clears throat> I got a shipment from Adam's Polish, and I'm stoked. So I got extra, let's see, I got tire shine. Detail spray, interior spray, and tire cleaner. I also got a brush to clean the inside of my rims that you can't necessarily get to. So I'm stoked about that. What else? Colleen and I. What did we do, dude? I don't know. We, it was a quiet week for me. That's why I'm hoping you had something. No, like, there, I feel like there was. I'm just having a brain fart because you put me on the spot. Now there's lights on my face. Like, I'm getting interrogated. <laughs> Goodness. Well, yeah, so we went to Syracuse, right? So we golfed. Yeah. Uh, Sam went swimming for a while. That was awesome. But then, again, he ripped his pads. Oh, again? Yeah. So he's, like, limping and wobbling, and I'm like, oh, goodness. So I had to carry him around everywhere because he couldn't necessarily walk. But he's, he's much better today. So it was, like, a day and a half where he was, like, in a little bit of pain, super sore from swimming, you know, doing the works. Have you ever had a bad dream about your dog? Yeah, actually. Isn't it the worst in the entire world? Yeah, I had to dream my basement flooded. And I had to, like, save Sam and Colleen. And I was, I woke up in the sweats. Because I, I just, like, woke up and grabbed them. And then Colleen got pissed because I touched her while she's sleeping. Heaven forbid. <laughs> and then Sam just kind of stared at me like, hey, Dad, are you okay? What's going on? And then he, like, licked my hand. And then he fell back asleep. And I'm like, okay, everything's fine. It was just a dream. They're the worst Ever. Yeah. Have you ever analyzed dreams or like tried to understand what certain things in dreams mean? Yeah, years ago, and then I stopped because there's like dream books. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah. It's probably just because that was the last thing I thought of before I fell asleep, and I'm just going to move on. Right. How accurate do you think dream analyzers are? They're probably more accurate than we like to admit. Like but... if you are falling in a dream, it actually means that your life is falling apart or something like that. Something stupid. They always correlate it to anything. Do you believe in psychics or like my like the, mediums? Who are the people? Yeah, the people that read your like palm readers or anything like that. I th- the people I th- that read your palms. Who are they called? <laughs> <laughs> I I definitely think that there's uh, legitimate mediums, like you know. Thank Hashtag you. not a sponsor, Teresa Caputo, the Long Island medium. I definitely think she's legit. Really? Um, also, hashtag not a sponsor, you know, no free shout out to Chelsea Gill. In, she's from OP, and she graduated like a year or two before us. She's our age. Um, she's she's legit. No quash. She Both of them actually worked with PD and solved cold case murder files. Seriously? By talking to victims. It's crazy. Wow. That's yeah, really dude. cool. Yeah. But like that thing where it's like, oh, see, this ends right here. So that means you're going to be married by 27 and then you're going to die at 46. It's like, really? You got that from my palm. Yeah. And then at 45, you actually like get diagnosed with yeah, some terminal. And I got married at 26. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, I don't, I don't know how that just like, that's the way my hand folds. 
So that means that I'm going to die this day. No, but there's like a there's a lifeline in your hand. But it's all your creases, though. Yeah, but they're caused from different things, Derek. Remember? Yeah, I'd be closing my hand. No, silly. They mean different <laughs> things. <laughs> Leave it's, us a comment in the bull in below. Do you have you ever gone to one of these people? Like, yeah. what is your experience with them? Do you find them to be reputable? I've heard some good stories, but then I've also heard that yeah, they told me that my mom really loved me. It's like, oh no, doy. Everybody's mom loved them. Eh. All right. Easy. Eh. Easy. They're, you know what I'm getting at. I know. Everybody, like, oh, you know, your dad really wishes he said that he missed you more or he loved you more. It's like, yeah, most dads do that. The probability of that is pretty high. Right. But then they're like, check under your bed. There's a sneaker there. Inside the sneaker, you're going to find a note that'll bring you to a treasure map. And you go home and you're like, oh, shit. Like, that, that's cool. Mm-hmm. But other than that, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like they're few and far between. Of course they're few and far between. It's a gift. Well, yeah. <laughs> Whatever, Mike. Whatever. No, I believe. Yeah. I believe. I believe. Do you believe in ghosts? Yes. I've also had experiences with ghosts. All right, explain. So I went to Gutelberg, bro. Gutelberg is a historically well-known cemetery in South Wales, and it is no doubt haunted. Gutelberg was a abortion doctor. Um, I really wanted to make a joke about mothers not loving their child, but I'm not going, I'm not doing it. So anyways, he was an abortion doctor and he performed abortions at his house. Um, And then there was, so he lives in the back by a lake. And then there's a cemetery basically on his like front lawn that leads up to the, the main road. Well, he ended up hanging himself. In his own tree, like, right outside of his house, next to the pond. It's called The Conjuring, Mike. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> so, me and a bunch of buddies would always go down and, um, have an ex- like, try to have an experience. Well, the, the stories that you would hear is that your car would not turn on if you parked outside of the cemetery. And... If it wouldn't start, then typically your windows would fog, and then you would see like baby handprints all on your glass, Jesus, around your car. You can also hear <clears throat> the the bloodhounds from the dogs trying to find Gutelberg. Um, and then you can like there's other stories about seeing just red eyes of the dogs, and then you can hear them bark and howl. Uh, what else was there? So what happened if your car didn't start? You would just like sit there, panic for a second, and then it would start. Yeah, or it'll just, like, roll on its own. And you're like, okay, this is weird. So we went, um, and we went at, it was, like, midnight, something like that. There was a whole car of us, and I'm not going to name who was there, but those who listen that were there are going to be like, yo, this night was insane. But basically, we were in high school. We had flip phones, okay? So remember when you accidentally press the internet button on your cell phone and you immediately clicked end 40 times because you didn't want to get charged. Yeah. It was those days. So we go down to <laughs> Gutelberg in my buddy's car because he had a car and we walked up the stairs, which you weren't supposed to do, I guess. So you're supposed to go like around the stairs and then the cemetery is just like gravestones parallel to each other in a straight line going down and then there's trees that line it. And during the day, it's actually, like, pretty. But at night, it's spooky as all hell. And then there's always, like, some sort of fog and haze because of the dew and just the moisture because it's always summer when you go. Mm -hmm. So we went. We parked right at the base of the stairs on the other side of the street, walked, and then there's signs everywhere. It's, like, private property, like, don't trespass, don't do this, like, don't be tools. And, of course, you're in high school and, like, sophomore year. You're a tool. Yeah, you're like, oh, I'm going. It's like, (laughs) okay, dude. (laughs) So we're walking down and everybody's in front of me. I'm the last guy in line, right? And we're basically online, um, walking online through the cemetery. And we're not touching anything. We're not kicking anything. We're not doing anything crazy. But there was a chestnut that whizzed past my ear and then hit the tree directly to my one o'clock, like dead center, head level, like eye level with me. And I thought it was one of my buddies throwing something at me just to get a rise out of us. And I turn around and no one's there. I'm like, okay, so first of all, nothing fell. It passed horizontally past me 
and then I heard it in my ear. So I'm like, okay, that's that's a little weird. So I announce, I'm like, hey, I just got a chestnut thrown at me. And then all my buddies turn around and look. And then uh, one of our buddies like kicked a twig and like started like messing with the trees. And we're like, we're not, we're not doing that. Like it's not, <laughs> this yeah. is, this isn't a thing. Like we're not going to get crazy. We're not going to get ballsy. Well, let's just leave. So we go to leave and then it happened again to my other buddy, but from the other side. So I was no longer the last guy. Mm-hmm. I was now the very front because we turned around. <clears throat> So my buddy, who was the very front, is now the very back. And then the same thing happened to him, just right to left, not uh, rear to front. So he heard the chestnut to his left and then looked at the tree. And he's like, all right, Mike, I just same thing happened to me. So then we started running because we're like, then we got scared. Yeah. We're like, all right, like, what is that? So we get to the car and the car wouldn't start. And the glass did get foggy. But I think it was more or less us breathing yeah. than it was because the you're whole hyperventilating thing. at that yeah. point too. Yeah, and I'm like, all right, like we we literally just ran, and to get to the car, we jumped the stairs. So I'm like, okay, like I didn't touch the stairs, like just, you know, no superstition, whatever. So the car didn't start. He tries it, nothing. Tries it, nothing. And then he's like, well, I don't want to flood it. Like I don't know what's going on. And we're like, dude, you got it. We have to leave. And then finally, the car turns over. We hightail it home, and then. By the time we get back, it was it was about 2.40 in the morning. So I get to bed. I'm in my bed. And then at 3.05, my phone goes off. And it was restricted. So I'm like, is our buddy playing a prank? Like, who else do I know right. that's awake right now? So I answer the phone. And then I'm like listening at first. And then all I hear is breathing. And then a baby cry. More breathing. And then the call ends. And I didn't say anything. So I'm like, okay, that's weird. So I hang up, go to sleep, wake up, go to school the next day. And I'm like, what in the world was that all about? So we all huddled up before first period in the hallway. And I said, hey, who got a phone call last night? And then all of us, like in the movies, we're in a circle. We all pull out our flip phones and then open the phones, go to our call log. And we all got restricted phone calls at 305. Jesus. I was like, who heard what? I'm like, I'm not saying what I heard, who heard what. And then three out of the five were all like babies crying and breathing. And I'm like, all right, sweet. And my hair was up on my neck the, the like first half of the entire day. I was so spooked. I'm like, perfect. So that was that was an experience at Gutenberg that we all had. Would it was you, wild. Would you ever bring like a Ouija board there? And try no. To- what are you, nuts? <laughs> no. <laughs> What are you talking about? Sit there with a Ouija board and play at Gutenberg <laughs> at 12? At, no. Go away. I So I did have – I don't <clears> – <throat> okay. I don't really want to say I don't believe in them. But I've gone to haunted places. Nothing's happened. So my s- suspicion level is low. Do you have any family members that do, like, ghost hunts? Yeah, my sister does. She actually slept over at the uh, Lovejoy train station, Iron – Mountain, it's not Iron Mountain. Iron Mountain is like a shredding company that shreds papers. But Iron... Iron Smoke? No, no. That's a distillery. Nailed it. Uh, <laughs> Iron Horse? No, it's Iron... No, it's like a... It's called something. Iron... I don't know. Anyway. Iron Workers? No. <laughs> no. It's part of like the, the train something in um, Lovejoy. Okay. So anyway, it's a known... Uh, to known like a uh, haunted, haunted place, place. yeah. And she tour. she had like one of those uh, thingamajigs that can detect electricity. Yeah. Okay. And she slept over there. Yeah. And so remind me to like never sit next to her ever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want so like <clears throat> she's super into it, and I, I want to see if I sold the voicemail because I say this voicemail. My sister is also super into it. She really? does the same thing. So she, my sister told me. That she stayed over my my house, my uh, duplex one time to take care of Cleo while I was on vacation or something like that. So I don't think that I have it anymore because I think I deleted it because I was so freaked out. Um, yeah, it happened. Yeah, I don't know if I still have it. I really wish I did. And I don't know why I would have deleted it except for the fact that I was probably scared. But so... <clears throat> What happened was she had this thought that someone was in the duplex because when she was downstairs, 
uh, she heard somebody walking up and down the stairs. I'm like, Jill, I have tenants. They're on the other side of the wall. They're walking up and down the stairs all night. Like, that's what it is. She goes, no, 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 that's really it. And I actually heard before that this place was haunted because the woman that had bought it from her mom died in the house. So she takes care of the house while she's passed away. I'm like, that's cute, whatever. At least she's a good spirit, right? So my sister told me that. And then later that night, <clears throat> I got two phone calls from Erie County Medical Center. That's how it came up on my phone. And then it was like this person on, they left me a voicemail because I didn't answer it. I wasn't near my phone, but they left me a voicemail that was like, like ghost sounds. I'm like, this is messed up. And then I got two of them right after each other. And I was telling Gina the story, I think. Who? Journey. Um, and then I put my phone on the table because I was done showing her or telling her the story. And then Spotify opened and started playing. I'm like, all right, that's kind of messed up. But, I mean, I can explain things away as coincidence. But that was one thing that kind of struck me as, eh, maybe there is something here. So, yeah, that's my story. Perfect. Yeah. It's real, dude. I did a... You're not a big fan of scary stuff either. I hate horror films. I don't watch them. I owned a couple. I watched The Exorcism of Emily Rose. And I was in... It was a good movie. I was into it. And then the movie turned off. And then it was dark. And I'm like, everything that I just saw is now inside my house. And I couldn't sleep for like three days. And I'm like, you know what? I'm done. And my sister will watch. She'll watch them. Like, people watch the news. I'm like, what is wrong with you? And she's like, oh, my God. Do you want to watch the new It? I'm like, no. I want to sleep sometime this year. I'm not going to lose sleep over It. I'll watch everything. Things like that don't scare me. The only thing that scares me are actual movies about murderers. We got to move this out. Yeah, they're coming. Yeah, they're coming. Uh, the only thing that I watch are movies about murder is that those can actually scare me because that's real life to me. I'm not going to sit in the middle of the night and have me start crab crawling down the ro- uh, the hallway because I'm possessed or something that we got to call an exorcism. That stuff doesn't scare me. Did you watch haunting of Hill house? That thing on Netflix that was supposed to scare everybody's socks off because no. it was the scariest thing since sliced bread. No, but uh, it wasn't? No. I didn't think it was scary at all. There was one time in the whole show that scared the hell out of me. And that's just because it was like a shocking scare. Like it was a quiet scene and then all of a sudden somebody screamed. That's the only thing that scared me in that whole movie. They're coming out this season two though. So we come on over and we'll watch it. No. Nope. No, I'm good. <laughs> no. Nope. <laughs> nope. Not having them. What we do have to do that's is fine. use your golf simulator. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. That's what we have to do. I need a new golf simulator. That's what are you I mean. talking about? I don't. I, I don't eh, it's fun, but I got to keep attaching the clips. It's, it's work. Anyway, we're about just buy more clips. We're already at forty-five minutes, so let's get to the cocktail section. That sound good to you? Yeah, hey, Mike, what are we gonna talk about today? <laughs> forty-five minutes later, here we are, bullshitting. Yep. All right, drop the beef for the cocktail section. <laughs> I just, I was worried about your vocal cords and you start dropping insane beats. I just, I don't know. I don't know, man. I got nervous. Cocktails. Oh God, my throat hurts. All right. Go for it. My cocktail is the hard cherry cola. It's one and a half ounces of crown royal vanilla, four ounces of cherry cola, you pour over ice in a highball glass, starting with whiskey. Stir and enjoy. Ooh, stir and enjoy. I like it. Nice and simple. Nice and simple. I like those now. It makes my job less hard. That's Mine nice. is called the Crown Royal Flush. You like that? Play on words, you know? All right, perfect. All right, it's uh, one and a quarter ounces of whiskey. This Crown Royal whiskey, obviously. 0.25 ounces of peach schnapps, and then three ounces of cranberry juice. Real simple. Yeah, that's awesome. You have three ingredients. I have two. Perfect. Crushing it. It makes it so much easier. Yeah, that's mint. Which, I already talked about this. Which one you'd prefer? Did you answer? Yeah, oh, yeah. Apple. You, yeah, Apple. Yeah, perfect. Nailed it. I pay attention. Don't worry. <laughs> well, let's rate this thing because we have a lot to talk about and we have 15 minutes. Perfect. Label right. branding. Let's go. All right. So the cap is a screw off cap. It's not a cork. However, it is of a crown. And then they have the. Is that that's paper, right? The the purple. Yeah. Okay. Then they got crowns around that, 
Uh, it's in a actual decanter, which is sweet. And their label is extremely recognizable. They got the crown on the purple pillow with the gold uh, frill coming off. The entire bottle is etched. Yeah, the entire bottle is etched. And they got the purple curtains with the gold back label and black font. So it's extremely recognizable. Everybody knows it. Yeah, it it's com- I mean, so classy. They bottle it or uh, they <laughs> box it in a really nice way. It's got its own box. It's got the purple bag with the gold stitch. And then for each flavor you buy, it's a different color bag. Like apple's green. It's, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. What so, is maple? I don't know. Oh, nailed it. I've only seen maple, the bottle itself. I haven't seen it boxed. I also haven't bought it. Somebody's just always had it. Yeah. The the boomers. Yeah. If this was a better tasting whiskey, I would be. <laughs> You're such a savage. If this didn't suck, <laughs> I didn't say that. I know. Um, this is such a sweet bottle. I am very. I would expect more from a flavor standpoint. Mm. Oh, so Derek Crusoe is not happy with something made in 1939. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my god. A lot of this stuff is made older than that. I know. How uh, long is this aged? Why is it that these things aren't like <laughs> is upfront about this? How many questions do you have? This is like the forty fifth bottle in a row that isn't local that doesn't have it listed on their label. Why not? I don't like that. So send them an email. All right, I will. I'll tell them what's up. <laughs> Ayo. Um, I don't know what that was, but so I have no idea. <laughs> I I would think that this is. If this was a little bit better tasting, this would be a home run. <laughs> yeah, if this didn't suck. You're such a savage. I'm just not a crown fan. Clearly. Label branding. I'll give I'll give the Avil the Avil Avil branding. The label branding, I'll give it an A plus 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 plus. Four pluses. Because this is the best bottle we've ever seen. whoa. It is? I think so. For not like so like from a Attention to detail and recognizability standpoint, this is something that if you peeled off all these labels, you would still know that this is Crown. There is so much attention to detail for the bottle itself. Everything revolves around Crown, and it comes with a purple bag. Like, what other thing do you have here that can compete with that that we've had? Jack Daniels comes in a rectangle. Another one of my favorites. I'm not disagreeing that it's top tier. You just don't think it's a four plus? I'm just surprised that it's the best bottle we've ever seen. That's all. What would you, what would you, I don't know. I I don't think that you would see anything like this. I don't disagree with you. Do you not like it? No, not at all. I I agree. I agree. I agree that it's. (laughs) In a with four pluses, I was just surprised. You oh. you made me take it back. That's all. Okay, perfect. All right, so nose. <laughs> you made me take it back. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, so now I gave it the high rating for the label branding. So this yeah, is where we go off go. the rails. Nose D F. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's not amazing, but it's not terrible. It's just very one dimensional. I have not so. I have not had had Jesus the ghosts. I have not had Crown in a very long time. So when we were going to do this, I was full blown. I'm gonna give this a sixty something. It's better than that. I will give you that. Now that my palate is changing, it's not my favorite, but I can appreciate it a little bit more than I thought I was going to. I'm giving this nose a B plus. I'm barely picking anything up other than ethanol, and it. I don't know. Like I'm just. There's really nothing coming through. Yeah, I agree with that. B plus. I agree, I agree. I agree, I agree, I agree. Initial taste. Oh, goodness. You're getting, on the initial taste, at least for me, a little vanilla, a little tiny oak. And mostly ethanol. That's straight up the only thing I'm tasting. Mm-hmm. B. Yeah. Ending note. 
the burn lingers. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a peppery burn. There's a hint of a spice, but I can't nail down which one. And then you get like a, you you just get the oils that coat your throat. And that's about it. Like I'm not, I'm not really getting anything. I'm gonna give this a B. Yeah, a B. And yeah, the that, reason why it's still a B and not a C is because it's versatile. You can still do a lot with this. Um, it's just, I, I, I mean, to just sit here and drink it neat, why? Mm-hmm. You know, like, there's so many good whiskeys that you can enjoy neat. I, I just, I don't know. And this is right in that same tier with Elijah Craig for Rose's Larceny. Price-wise, yeah. yeah. Um, so for ending note tasting profile, you just want to put pepper and... Spice. I mean, that's, yeah, like that's, a little bit of a baking spice. Yeah, like that's all I'm getting. Yeah, and then burn. Just for fun, can you give me that dropper? Because there is a little bit of oil in there. Just a just a wee bit. Then we gotta rate this bad boy. Do you want some more or no? No, I'm good. So what what do we give it for ending note rating? B. B. It's just nothing like <clears throat> if I'm going to have crown, if I'm forced to have crown, there's no way I'm grabbing this one. If I'm forced to have crown, I'll go buy crown maple. Yeah, and I would buy crown apple. Yeah. No question. Like why if you're looking for a typical if you're looking for a typical bourbon that is going to or whiskey, I'm sorry. That is going to leave you with a. I, I don't even know why you would. I, honestly, I don't even know why you would buy this. Th- that sounds bad, but w- what flavor profile are you going for when you go for this? Whiskey? Right, I. Nothing. You, but I, I don't know. This is my feeling on this, and please, if you disagree with me, again, I'm just some random jamoke that has a podcast. The, if they change this. Mash bill, 10% either way. Like, they put 10% more corn and 10% less rye. Or 10% more rye and 10% less corn. They have a rye. completely better. Yeah. Crown has a rye. Yeah. So I think it would be interesting to try that and see what that tastes like. I just feel like with the corn being so low, with the rye being high enough to where you're taking a second look at it, like, why is this such a high rye? Mm-hmm. But paired with also a higher malted barley, everything's just washing each other out and having this very bland, not sweet, not savory, not spicy, not anything flavor. It's very bland to me. Yeah, it's bland burn. Yeah. That's all it is. Bland burn. Gone. You know we're going to get some 60-year-old in the comment section just going off on us. Yeah, but it's fine because the first comment's going to be, loved it. <laughs> So, final rating. Give me that countdown. One. Yeah, go ahead. Get drunk first. Wonderful. I just wanted to see if the drops did anything. And it didn't. Yeah. All right. Three, two, one. 82. 82. Come on. You know it. Oh, I don't. 85.5. Thank you. You're welcome. I hope you know I only just to watch me struggle. You know I only say "come on," you know it, just to give myself a little bit more time to process what it actually is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Crown is something that you grew up with, not drinking, but it was always in the house because your your parents had it. This is a very traditional drink. It's just for me and with my palate right now. It's just nothing that I'm going to go buy because if I want something. At this price point that is going to taste better, I will go with a bourbon or a Tennessee whiskey rather than this makeshift blended Canadian whiskey that isn't awry. That's my personal opinion on this. Yeah, I'm with you. It just doesn't do much for me. Yeah. I don't know. It's All right, fun. Mike. Tell people what we got coming up. We did a lot of reaching out. Yeah, I'm going to have to pull it up because there's a lot going on now. The goodness... All right, let me go to... Like, I went off on Instagram the other day. I'm like, yo, listen, let's reach out to as many places as we can because we want to kickstart this. Now with coronavirus, 
virtually gone. We wanted to do whatever we could to get back into the interviewing game because we aren't dumb. We know that that's where most of our subscribers and our listeners will come from are the us interviewing local businesses. So we have, we reach out to a lot of them. Uh, everything is in the works right now. We just have to solidify dates and uh, we got some exciting stuff coming for everybody. Yeah. So we got open arms resurgence, Zigabee vineyards. Then we have, uh, WGR 550. Mm-hmm. Then we have... Buffalo Cigars. Yeah, potentially Buffalo Cigars. Waiting on a response. Um, the... Who else, dude? There was... We've reached out to a ton of people yeah. that haven't even seen the message yet. Yeah, Deep South Taco is one of them. Macy's Place is one of them. Um, but yeah, the big news is Resurgence. Yeah. Resurgence is and WGR. The date's not confirmed, but we got a response, so we will be re- interviewing Resurgence sometime soon. Yep. And then once we nail down the location for WGR, that's set. Mm-hmm. So that's that's super easy. And also with uh, what's it called too? Um, Wozniak. We got to get back on that too. Yeah. So a lot of cool content coming your their, way. Their businesses are considered Phase Four because they fall under entertainment. Gotcha. I don't. I don't know. There's a lot of. Now that we're heading into phase four, things are going to start flooding. Uh, and then people are trying to figure out how it all works. I mean, there's still there's stuff at Buffalo Stilling that we got to do. There's there's a lot coming up. So mm-hmm. stay tuned. Definitely uh, stick around. Keep following us. If you are subscribed, unsubscribe to resubscribe <laughs> because that actually helps the algorithms helping out the boys. So we appreciate it. Uh, follow us on Instagram. We just hit 500 followers on Instagram, which is a huge milestone. So thank you all for following and, and sticking along. The We're also on Facebook. And next week we got Jack Daniels. And we're just going to keep rolling and start filling in dates. Oh, yeah. So that's it. If you haven't watched that interview with Crooked Lampos Brewing, yes. go back and watch it. Uh, again, th- those guys were awesome. So thank you guys very much if you're listening for the hospitality and the good conversations. I mean, we've not only did we have an interview that day, but we also made new friends. So that's something that was uh, very over, above, and beyond. And we, we appreciate your time and look forward to all these different interview interviews coming up. I mean, with that Crooked Lampost, Crooked Lampost interview, We've talked with uh, both Mike and Colleen there, which is strange because you're Mike and Colleen as well. But uh, we talked with Mike and Colleen over there, and they were giving us references to interview other people. So as soon as we get some confirmation or some sort of communication back and forth, we'll definitely let you guys know what those businesses are. But they're awesome, and I'm pumped to interview the one especially, and you know which one that is. So it's going to be a good time. We're here for the long haul, uh, and thank you, everybody, for watching us. Make sure you subscribe. And, Mike, this has been Episode 40 of the Buffalo Happy Hour. Nine left, dude. Nine left. Here we go. Nine. Ten left. No, no, no. The one's oh, already yeah, 41. Planned. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Nine left. Here we go. You're, you're going to be fired up. Oh, yeah. I cannot wait. All right, everybody. We're out.